Okay. Hi, I have a question for you today. Have you ever wondered what is impossible? Now, you might have heard of the famous traveling salesman problem. It is a problem where a salesman is trying to travel to some number of cities. Now, imagine your boss, he would like to take a mini vacation next week and he has asked you to help him make some travel plans. He would like to visit Vienna, Prague and Budapest for his mini vacation and here's how he wants to do it. He would like to start at Vienna and eventually return back to Vienna for his friend's wedding at the end of his vacation. He also gave you a budget to work with and you had to check if there is an affordable route that fits his budget. Because it didn't seem like a difficult problem, you manually look up all of the possible routes. You check the flight prices on various airlines, and on that day, you felt really good about yourself because you even gave him the cheapest route since there were only two possible routes. He could go from Vienna to Prague, and then from Prague to Budapest, and from Budapest back to Vienna. The second one is from Vienna to Budapest, and from Budapest to Prague, and finally from Prague he will return back to Vienna. All of this was pretty easy to do, and you finished the task and headed off to a great weekend. However, when you showed up for work on Monday, your boss asked you for help again, partly because you did such a brilliant job last week. For his 50th birthday, he would like you to help him with his upcoming travel plan. Instead of three cities this time, he would like to visit 50 cities. Like last time, he also gave you his budget and asked you to check if there is a route that fits his budget so that he could travel to each city exactly once and return to the city he would start with. Now 50 might not seem like a big number, but if we take a closer look, there are n-1 permutation, n-1 factorial permutation to check, and entering that into the calculator reveals that in fact n-1 factorial, which is 49 factorial, in this case is about 6.08 times 10 to the 62 permutation. If you did not know that your boss budget was too small for his grand dreams, you might have tried to check all of the possible permutations. We can do a dimensional analysis to see just how hard it is to compute this many permutations. If we say a normal modern day computer can perform 10 to the 6, which is 1 million calculations per second, we can figure out how many years it would take to, to compute this computation using the following dimensional analysis. Because we have to look up 6.08 times 10 to the 62 permutations, we're going to multiply that by 1 over 10 to the 6 because we assume that the computer can perform a million computations per second. In addition, we also multiply that by 1 over 60 because there are 60 seconds in one minute. Not only that, we must also multiply 1 over 60 again because there are 60 minutes in 1 hour. We also multiply by 1 over 24 because there are 24 hours in 1 day. Finally, multiply the whole thing by 1 over 6, 365 because there are 365 days in 1 year. I got 1.92 times 10 to the 49 years after entering that into my calculator. It would take 1.92 times 10 to the 49 years to complete these calculations. This is actually known as the traveling salesman problem. And it is famous because it is very difficult to solve. In fact, it is known as an NP-complete problem. I would like to bring your attention to the class P. And the problems in class P which is a class of problem that we can solve using polynomial time algorithm. There are also problems in the class NP, which consists of problem where a certificate can be verified in polynomial time. Meaning that if I have an NP problem and someone hands me a solution, I will be able to check if the certificate is correct in polynomial time. This means that any problem 
in P is also in NP because the problem in P can be solved with or without certificate. But to this day, we do not know whether or not P is a proper subset of NP. In other words, we do not know if P equals NP. What we just talked about is an NP-complete problem. A problem is NP-complete when it is both in NP and it is NP-hard. If someone can find a polynomial time algorithm for any of the NP-complete problem, that means that P equals NP. Now why is this important? Someone might ask you to solve a problem for them, and you might realize that this problem is really hard, and you cannot seem to get an exact answer for the solution. Wouldn't it be nice to know how to formulate an argument to say to this person that this problem is a really difficult one? In the next video, we're going to talk about reduction and how it can be used to show that a problem is NP-complete.